I'm going to start off this talk, listening to everyone's talks before me, by saying that I'm not an entomologist. <laughs> I'm a molecular biologist. But I've had some students working on insects in my lab, so I'm going to give an overview of this project and hopefully um, sell why molecular biology is really good for entomologists. Right, so urbanization is a global problem, and we know it's a global problem, and we know that it decreases our biodiversity, and this is because ecosystems are either displaced entirely or they become fragmented, and those taxa in those fragmented little pockets cannot survive. So what's becoming increasingly apparent is in this world of ever-increasing urbanization is we need to start worrying about these urban green spaces or open spaces within our cities. So these open spaces are important because they can act as reservoirs of regional diversity and they also provide vital ecosystem services which (coughs) we as city dwellers need, right? So clean water and stuff like that. So to (coughs) properly plan and manage these open areas within cities, we need to know what biodiversity exists within those particular regions. So we need to be able to monitor this this biodiversity and cover cryptic species and also detect possible invasive species. And so we need a database of what is in the city. So the city I'm going to be talking about is the city of Durban, which falls within the Etiquini municipality. It's one of the largest municipalities in South Africa. And it's of global importance because the city um, is heavily pressurized by urbanization, but it also sits within a global biodiversity hotspot, the Maputo Land, Ponda Land, Albany region. So we need to preserve the biodiversity within the city. And so to try and uh, manage this, the um, Etiquini municipality have come up with this Durban Metropole Open Space System, known as DEMOS, which is essentially a network of open spaces in, in the city that are mapped. So these could be nature reserves or undeveloped plots of land or any type of open space. Right, so our project, we were interested in, in understanding what um, it occurs within these different open spaces and it's a very ambitious project, as you'll see from my next summary slide. But we wanted to answer some very simple questions. So we want to know things like what species are in the city, how many cryptic species do we have, how many invasive species, how are these species distributed in the city, do they occur in different vegetation types, are some reserves better at conserving biodiversity than others? And what we did is we visit these different DEMOS spaces, and I'll show you on the next map these different spaces we've visited, and we go and collect as many of the invertebrate taxa as we can. So we go to all different vegetation types within the open space. We try and sample the flying, crawling, and soil inverts. We then take all these samples into the lab, and we try to sort these to morpho species. We then take five individuals of each morpho species um, for each reserve, and these are shoved into our molecular pipeline. So for our molecular work, we're concentrating on a mitochondrial gene, the CO1, and my students in the next (coughs) talk will give you more detail about CO1, but it's the barcoding gene. Right, so so far we've been to 19 different DEMOS localities, so the project has been running since 2011. Um, But today in my talk, I'm gonna focus on these eight open spaces here and they form a transect from um, the harbour all the way up to Maritzburg, so it's about a 75 kilometre transect, which is quite a small spatial scale. Um, So this is my first slide of results, which is essentially a summary of the molecular data we've done so far. So like I've said, we've tried to focus on uh, on as many invertebrate groups as possible. Um, So here's kind of an idea of um, what we're sampling. So everything from spiders to ants to earthworms to snails. So far, um, we've sorted through many thousands of specimens, um, but we've submitted to the database um, just over 8,000 specimens. So each one of these 8,000 specimens have been photographed and they're all GPS, um, all have GPS coordinates. And so far, we have just over 7,000 sequences, so we're doing quite well. So for the talk today, I'm going to focus on some key groups. So spiders, we've heard a lot about spiders, uh, beetles, flies, ants, and bugs. Okay, so I'm a molecular phylogeneticist, so I can't do a talk without including at least one phylogenetic tree. So these are the neighbor joining trees for the groups that I'm concentrating on today. 
and they're all drawn to the same scale. So it's an interesting way, it's exactly the same molecular marker, so it's a CO1 marker. And it's very interesting to see that each one of these groups, even though it's the same portion of the genome, is evolving in quite different ways. So if we have a look at the ant, you can see there's lots of these very short terminal branches in comparison to something like the flies, where we have much less variation, but each one of the, the specimens have these very long branches. Okay, so that's all I'm going to say about phylogenetics. So, because this is an urban project, which is quite unique within the barcoding realm, um, we needed to justify why our project was so important. So what I did in this slide was I just assessed the contribution of our project towards the global barcoding initiative. So this initiative is trying to barcode all life on Earth. So what I did is I took the, the species, the sequence for each of the species we included, and I blasted it against the Barcode of Life database. If the match was greater, so a sequence similarity match was greater than 95%, so this is the central little dot in the middle, that says that that particular species is already in the database. Okay? If it falls within the central bubble here, it means that potentially the, the genus or the family is already represented in the database, and then this big ball here means that it's completely new. So even though it's a an urban environment, you can see that our contribution towards the global um, initiative is actually we're doing really well. Something like ants, so ants in terms of barcoding in South Africa is very well represented. And so you can see our study is still contributing towards that database, but not that much. But if you look at something less studied like Hemiptera, Coleoptera, you can see that our contribution, almost everything that we're adding to the database is new and novel, even at the family level, which is quite cool. Right. <coughs> so, just having a look at the data we've collected. So, I said we've been growing since 2011. Um, what I did here was I compared private. So, this is where a species was only collected in a single open space or reserve in comparison to those species that are collected in multiple reserves. So, if you remember, it's only a 75, uh, 75 kilometer scale. So, it's a really small spatial scale. But you can see that the majority of what we're collecting has ac is actually only collected in one reserve. So we have by far huge numbers of private species and very few shared among the different reserves. Um, this could be that the city of Durban is, has a lot of unique taxa, or it could be a reflection of our sampling. I think that's more probable. It's a, it's a, so things you can see, for example, things that fly and then are hard to catch. The students don't like to sample those as much. Um, as things like spiders that stand still and they can easily collect. So this hopefully will improve and we'll get a better, rea more realistic picture of what's going on as we improve our sampling. Right, so as I said in, when I began, the next two talks are um, by students in my lab and they're going to be specifically focusing on, on certain groups. But what I thought I'd do today is kind of take a comparative approach and try and combine all the data from all these different taxa to tell us something about the city. So something about are there common patterns in the phylogenies of the different taxa and are all taxa affected by urbanization in a certain way. Okay. <clears throat> so the first analysis I looked at is to have a look if the different taxa across these different taxonomic groups have similar distribution patterns. Okay? So what I did was I created a presence and absence matrix for the, um, for the presence of these different species in the different reserves. I drew a tree, I'm not going to go into details, and then I visualized it using multidimensional scaling. So essentially, if the samples are close to each other, it means that they share distributional patterns. And so maybe unsurprisingly, because these things are so taxonomically different, the patterns that we see across these taxa are quite different from each other, um, and only really maybe Coleoptera and Hemiptera have similar patterns of distribution across the city. So in a similar analysis, what I try to do is compare species richness patterns so here, the closer the points, the more the reserves share species. So you would expect uh, reserves that are very close to each other, like Springside and Epithe, to share species, while an open space like Maritzburg, which was really far away from all the samples in the city, to be quite distinct. And we, in fact, don't see that pattern. It's very difficult if you just glance your eye across here, the the um, species richness patterns of these different taxa are really quite different from each other. 
but there are also kind of general patterns that you can pull out. So the most geographically distant sampling locality was Maritzburg, and we expected this because it's also found within a completely different vegetation type to be quite the species that you find in Maritzburg, to be quite different from what you find within Durban. And in fact, we didn't see that. So we see the Maritzburg samplings clustering quite closely with all the samples from Durban. Uh, those two reserves that I said are, are geographically very close to each other, Springside and Epithi, we actually, in very few cases, found that they clustered close together. So it doesn't look like geographical <coughs> distance between these open spaces describes the species richness very well. There's one little reserve here, Palmit, seems to be quite distinct in a lot of the taxa. So this kind of highlights this reserve as an area of um, elevated species richness and something we want to look at further. Right. So, <coughs> in summary, this is a very ambitious project, which I have will be many years before we finish. But it's the first molecular-based inventory of an African urban environment, and in fact of an urban environment around the world. Most uh, barcoders like to go to exotic islands and do barcoding, and I'm stuck with Durban. <laughs> so what we found was that species richness patterns um, suggest that geographical distance between the different reserves is not a major determinant of um, the species richness in the city. And all this data is contributing towards a larger project where we're only starting to answer some really interesting questions, like what and where are species distributed within the city, if the parks are doing a good job of preserving biodiversity, if we should be um, keep funding these different areas within the city. And I didn't mention it in my talk, but we also looked at invasive and introduced species, and luckily we have very few of those within the city of Durban. And then this is just a slide showing, I've been very lucky to have a couple of generations of some very nice um, and interesting um, students. Um, they've done most of the sampling and most of the sorting and this taking photographs and submitting. And I received um, a lot of money from Sanby Invasive Species Project and the Canadian Centre for DNA Barcoding. And then, as mentioned at the beginning of my talk, this project fits within this um, joint research partnership between the Etiquini Municipality and UKZN. And specifically, um, our project is um, aimed at this um, KZN Sandstone Southfield Research Project where we're looking at base, baseline biodiversity data to pour into the management system. Cool. Thank you.